Good morning, everyone. Can you believe that we've been through the whole day? We're at the, we're at the uh, beginning of our last time together. Um, I'm Beth Ryler's Dam, known as Curvy Girl Beth across social media. And uh, I'm going to talk to you today about gaining a thriving new perspective. So my disclosures are that I am the founder and CEO of Curvy Girl Beth and also a brand ambassador for Lipo Elastic. So, what can you see in that picture? On the left, I was at my first uh, FDRS conference here uh, um, in Dallas, and I had just pretty much walked in the door and started uh, helping to um, meet and greet everyone as they arrived because I wanted to somehow get involved immediately and um, I knew that these were going to be my people. So um, I had just been on a six month protein bar, protein shake, chicken and broccoli regime uh, with six days in the gym of weight training. I had lost 30 pounds. I was feeling great. That dress actually I had taken in quite a bit, and now when I look at it, I see all the surplus that was even uh, there then. Uh, but since then, I ha um, this fast forward to October of 2019, when I had started um, a social media journey to start raising awareness for lipedema. And by that point, uh, I had gained about 20 pounds, and, but, I think that my smile looks quite bigger. And um, I think that the reason for that is because when I was diagnosed in 2017, I had never, I had heard about lipedema for the first time in July. And all of a sudden, here I am in Dr. Iker's office. She's, what are you here for? I said, I'm here to see if I have lipedema. She said, oh, darling, you're a classic. Is there a question? <laughs> no joke. I said, well, I kind of thought it looked like, you know, I fit the criteria, but I wanted to make sure that I had a professional opinion since I was lucky enough. I live in Los Angeles. She's in Santa Monica. I thought, try it out, you know. So in any case, um, at that point, there was some, you know, there's so many mixed emotions. Uh, and I... Um, came to realize that, okay, now I know I have this thing that I cannot change. It is in my body. Certainly I can work to change my body, but it is never going to leave my body regardless of what I do. There is always going to be, it is always going to be at the root of something, right? So I decided that I probably should start looking into embracing myself and accepting myself. And so I'm a huge proponent of that. I think that it is incredible, life is incredible on the other side of acceptance. And um, after that first convention, I was really driven because I had met some, after I did registration, I participated in the fashion show, I had just got back into plus size modeling and I thought that was a great segue. And I realized that in this group, uh, we have a lot of women who are doing all that they can, but maybe they're not so um, interested in putting themselves out there. And I felt like I was up to the task. So here I am a few years later, and uh, who knew? Couldn't have predicted it. Um, so has anyone ever gained weight here? <laughs> oh, there's one lady. Thank you for your honesty. Look at that. <laughs> well, I think we've all been through a pandemic. And from my opinion, I think most people have some sort of body change at a minimum. And at an even bigger minimum, they have moved their bodies less. So their bodies probably look a little different. Things shifted, whatever. But um, throughout my life, I have been smaller, I have been bigger, 
Um, at one point, I was 400 pounds. And uh, at my smallest, uh, in adult life, I think I weighed 169 for about a day. And um, I'm closer to the bottom than the higher. But um, in any case, uh, in my experience, any time that I ever gained weight, I was, um, you know, it was likely after I had just been on some crazy diet and then the rebound that comes with that, as it always does, and then my legs were bigger and my waist was smaller and my arms were bigger and those were always the things I was trying to uh, get rid of when I was dieting. And so uh, uh, I remember coming from the 2018 to 2019, and I think maybe I had gained about 10 pounds, and I was like, oh my God, how am I gonna go? You know, like, I'm gonna go, and everybody's gonna be like, oh, look at you, you know? And, um, and I came, and I was like, look at that, there's other people who've gained weight. Isn't that amazing? These are really my people. Um, and we're still here, and we're still out, and we're still trying, and we're still moving forward. And so I think that, it's so important that we begin to embrace ourselves, but to really embrace our circumstances. So I think none of us chose to be in a pandemic for two years. I think we all thought two weeks was gonna be completely insane when they told us about it, right? But we, we made it through, we're here, we're, we're still trying to move forward, we're still trying to take an interest in ourselves and get, get to our best selves, right? So I think that the circumstances that you're in, when, when it's something that you can't change, at the beginning of the pandemic, when I would be uh, talking to my uh, social media community about embracing, um, I was using the example of, oh, okay, now we're stuck in our houses and you live in a one bedroom apartment and you don't own it. So you don't really have license to do whatever you want and you have brown carpet and you absolutely hate brown carpet. But you can't change that, right? And before you didn't care, you didn't notice you have brown carpet because you went to work, you went to the gym, you went out with friends. How much time did you really spend at home? And then you went to sleep. So the amount of time that you saw that brown carpet, you could put up with it. But now you're there day in, day out, you don't have anywhere to go. You don't, you're not even going outside, so now what do you do? Well, you have to shift how you look at that brown carpet. What can I do to change it? I can't change the brown carpet because it's not a possibility. Certainly, many people didn't even have the wherewithal, like for most of us. A lot of people don't have the wherewithal to, to seek the, um, I want to say treatments, so that's not really the word I want to use, but I'm going to go with that. <laughs> treatments that are available to us, right? Sometimes financially things are out of realm. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm like, maybe you can move your furniture. If your furniture is always placed to the left and then you see the whole entire floor, maybe you can move the furniture to the right where you're only seeing the corner of it and that changes your perspective. And so you kind of have to embrace where you're at and see how you can work within that situation. For us, I think it's really important also to recognize that the scale is a liar. So especially with lipedema, we as a community weigh more than certainly we look. Um, we're generally always over the, you know, whatever the chart says for our height or our weight or whatever. Probably even as children, we weren't in within that range, even though we were perfectly normal, um, uh, you know, by standards, uh, because our our lipedema fat and our interstitial fluid creates excesses that a regular body doesn't have. So, um, and as the d physicians pointed out yesterday, the, um, the, the, the uh, charts, like the BMI chart, it's ancient, right? It's really outdated. But for some reason, the medical community doesn't want to kick it out. But luckily, there are physicians like those here yesterday who recognize that those are really you know, unattainable goals for many, and certainly for most of us, right? Um, 
what happened was I, coming off of that six months of very, very strict, and I've had many six months, one year, six years, whatever, of very strict, very no uh, deviation type of uh, nutrition in my life, I started listening to my body. One of the things that Dr. Eicher told me was that um, you needed to follow the 80-20 rule, which is if 80% of the time you are doing all the things to support yourself and what works for your body, then at 20% of the time when you come to a holiday, you actually, you know, you, you consider whether or not you want to partake in whatever it might be that you normally wouldn't do. And so I think by doing that for me, I had that rebound uh, after that, and that's where I've lied in this additional 20 pounds. But it felt so good and so freeing to be able to make those choices because before it was never an option because I had to be so rigid in order to be, uh, you know, I guess following the plan. I don't even know what to call that. So to me, that was extremely freeing. It was an idea like, oh, right, like because I know that chasing what I've always been chasing is really not a reality, I gave myself the license to actually just like exist. And then that was really kind of really freeing. Um, I think that also we have to begin to question the narratives around weight. Um, for so long it has been, and still is, <laughs> a thing within society that you have to look a certain way, you have to weigh a certain way, and people consider, you know, value around that. It's completely, you know, within our own minds we have to start questioning those narratives and where they came from. Um, So I implore you to consider, I just want you to consider <laughs> shifting your mindset to questioning how did you come to believe what you believe and really asking, is it true? So here's a picture of me this year I took for a Valentine's photo shoot. When I went to put this picture in, I'm deciding what I'm going to write, and I see the alternative text box, and it says, a person lying on the ground. That's all it said, a person. It didn't say a fat person. It didn't say a pear-shaped woman. It didn't say, holy smokes, look at those hips. It didn't say, thick thighs save lives. It said, <laughs> A person lying on the ground. That was the description that was automatically generated for the alternative text. And I was absolutely sitting there, quite honestly, I was sitting in a Whole Foods in the little restaurant section, typing this out, no joke. And I was like, are you kidding me? It says a person. Look, like who made this AI? Because clearly this AI is open-minded. <laughs> this is amazing. There was no judgment from the AI. I was floored, absolutely floored. And I was like, well, clearly, I now have been given what I have to talk about on this slide, because at that point, I didn't know. So can you imagine if you were walking around and you saw people that looked like you? When I walked into that first, I live in Los Angeles. So you might imagine what people look like in Los Angeles, if you've ever been there, or if you've just seen television, because that's truly what everybody looks like. I'm the only one who doesn't look like that. Um, but um, the rest of the world, people look like that, because in truth, 70% of women are a size 16 or above. Can you believe that? Would anybody believe that? No, we wouldn't believe that because we have never been told that. We have never, that is the majority. It's not even like 51%, it's 70%. Now, an atrocity that goes along with that, that we don't know, um, is that only 20% of clothing is made in those sizes, but that's kind of an aside, and I think we all need to have a huge uprising about that, but that's for another talk. Um, 
So what if we actually went around and recognized that we were the majority? Because we are. And we stand in the power that we actually are normal. So I don't know if you've ever seen the hashtag of normalized normal bodies that Mick Cezanne has. We are normal, but we were never led to believe that because we're stuck in the, uh, I don't know, the historical perspective that we've always been shown. Uh, going back for a second, I believe that representation matters and it's up to us to start doing so. That's what I try to do every day in my social media platforms. We all have seasons. Here, um, it was, I was in 2011, oh, 20, 2001, good Lord. Um, actually, right before 9-11, I was in Italy, in Rome, and I had climbed to the top of the Vatican Tower, all 383 steps, that when I came down, I read the warning sign, if you have any health issues, you shouldn't be going up. Well, I didn't really have any health issues at the time, but I basically just fit in the little space, and I realized as I got about three, three quarters of the way up, well, I realized when I got down, <laughs> that at about three quarters of the way up, as it got tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, that what would have happened had I had a medical emergency, that that would have been really dangerous and perhaps I shouldn't have done it. But I've always, I've never been stopped by my physicality. So um, sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, but we can thrive at any size. Um, in 2005, this is uh, me probably at that 169. Um, that was a very victorious day for me because I was like running up those steps. I wasn't, my hips weren't hitting and it was um, a fantastic um, you know, win that day. Um, but I think when we're in our various seasons, we have to have compassion for ourselves. And that's the key. We're used to having compassion for others, right? I think at us as a group of people with this condition, it's known that we have sensitivities that others may not, um, may not have. And we're used to maybe focusing on others and, and, and deflecting from ourselves. And so that compassion that we give to others, we have to start to give that to ourselves as well. You can decide to make a change at any time. You're never stuck. It's just how you act, what, what actions you take. Um, each, stir, each stage in life serves a purpose. For instance, I think that this, um, this pandemic we've been in has, been a, um, has set us all up for a rebirth. Um, every pre season prepares us for the next, and we learn something each time. Today, uh, as I got up, um, I've been worried all week about having a puffy under eye. And so uh, I decided to lower any inflammation I have by putting my legs up on the wall for about 15 minutes before I came, you know, when I woke up this morning. And my legs were not swollen this morning, so why I needed to do that, I don't know, because it's not a regular practice of mine. <laughs> But I decided, okay, I should do this. Got off of the, and I was very pleased when I woke up that my face was not swollen under here. And then 15 minutes later, I go and I look in the mirror. I looked at my legs and I thought, oh, they might be a little, do they look different? Oh, I don't know. Why, you know, my knee doesn't feel so. And then I go to the mirror and I'm like, oh, look, that's nice. You just increased all of the inflammation in your eyes that you didn't have when you started up. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, here we are. We're back. Um, we, perfect, I couldn't have, come on, I couldn't have planned this any better. <laughs> we are alive, people, we are alive. If any of you know Megan Pfeiffer, um, who's in Australia, who does work with uh, uh, lipedema patients and keto and lymphedema and all of that, she, I was in a workshop with her and she was reminding everybody, we are alive. Okay, we've made it through the pandemic, let's go. Um, I think because we're alive, we can thrive and <laughs> let's just do it. And let's do it collectively because we all need it really. Um, uh, imagine what would happen if today you were just grateful for everything 
Um, and you focused on what you are grateful for. How amazing a world would we live in if everybody took that to do once a day. Uh, I think that, again, offering ourselves grace is really such a key to bring in that compassion and finding what serves us best because we're all individual and if we haven't learned anything through any of these conferences uh, and within our community boards, it, sh it should be that we've learned that we have to find what works for us because we're all unique and we have to focus on what is good for us. What works for someone else may not work for us. And I fully believe, and I believe we need to step into this on a daily basis, that uniqueness is our superpower. Because we've been taught that we should all be alike, right? Everybody's striving to be whatever it is that they took from the messages that we've been sent forever, right? You know, I, I you'd like to use the example of everybody's striving to be an Abercrombie ad, and the Abercrombie people don't even look like the ad, so I don't know what everybody is doing, but... Um, and focusing on what's good, focus on what works, what makes us joyful, what makes us happy, what makes us uh, feel like we're alive and, and want to do the next thing. Showing gratitude for just one aspect of our lives daily increases our joy tremendously. Acceptance. In my world, acceptance is key. I may be part of the body positive movement on social media. However, I don't really like to um, talk about that <laughs> or, or uh, assign myself to that because I think that acceptance is, is key. I think one of the questions someone asked me uh, on my poll was how do you uh, learn to, how do you love the parts of yourself that you think are ugly? Well, in my opinion, you don't have to love them. You just have to accept them because they're not, they're not changing, really. I mean, sure, there are aspects that you can change, but then they'll, something else will come along that you don't love. And so if you can accept where you are and where you're at, it would be a great first step. I think when we recognize that we have this condition, it's actually step one, and that instead of fighting with it, accept that this is a part of our life. We have a chronic disease. It is progressive. It doesn't have a known cure at the moment. However, there are so many things that we can do to affect it and improve. I think appreciating that We've got FDRS, we've got the Lipedema Foundation, we have this community, and uh, the disease has actually been found. It was found in 1940, but then completely the ball was dropped until, what year, Cheyenne, 2010, maybe? So we're, we're, we're brand new, we're brand new, 12 years in. Um, and just think of how much research, how much improvement has happened since we were at the last convention. Uh, what, is, what are we at, three, three years ago was that? No, I can't even keep track of time anymore. Right, it was, right? So, I mean, we didn't have an ICD-9 code even then. So, uh, let alone the incredible amount of advances. You know, it was a, only a fat disorder. Now we know the connective tissue relation. I mean, it, the, the things that have happened, the fact that we have um, researchers studying it and that we have a community that guides us and inspires us. You know, we see how our, our Lippy sisters have, um, you know, what they're doing for themselves, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, and gives us guidance of what could we possibly do for ourselves, right? And I think rejoicing for what others have actually done um, for themselves and making the improvements really should give us all hope that we can do the same for ourselves. And a key piece is that acceptance, I'm just really about acceptance, that's all I can say. <laughs> um, 
Acceptance that we play a part in this. We are not victims. We can raise to valor. Um, we have um, self-care is essential and it is lifelong. And we have to recognize that we are part of our self-care team. Self-care is a necessity. Something will grow from all you're going through and it will be you. Really, our daily daily goal should be to be better than we were the day before. So self-care matters. Learning what works for us to empower, it empowers us to take control. Doing things we enjoy raises our endorphins, which really improves our situation. So say you decide, hey, I'm going to join um, Beth and Sarah's movement and fitness group that we started on Facebook in April because I'm going to move more. Well, but you hate rowing and you decide, okay, I have a rower, I'm going to row. No, that's not a good idea. That's never going to work. You're going to hate it after the first week and there's no point in that. But you love to go for a walk in nature. We actually had this. One of our women decided that she was going to take a walk every day uh, during the April challenge to move more. And she wrote in and said, I can't believe how good I feel. It makes me have such joy every day that I'm actually moving my body in this way. So raising the endorphins helps us overall, right? Observing the changes that we encounter help us grow. I had a situation where whatever I was eating was bothering my toe. And I was like, what is this? I did a little deep dive and I realized, oh, that's oxalates, that's mast cell. Great, fantastic, you can't eat that anymore. And that helped me to move to the next thing, right? That's growth. Taking pictures is a way to connect with ourselves. We don't see ourselves. How many of you actually have social media? How many of you have a picture of yourself on your social media? Oh, I like that. It's about half. That's very good. Congratulations. I'm impressed. The rest of you, can you please add one? <laughs> You are part of your social media. People generally on social media know the people they're with and they've already seen you, no reason to hide. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Um, embracing our individual situation, our diagnosis with a gentle perspective. Be gentle with yourselves, people. It decreases our stress. Recognizing there are stages of grief move through them and try to be compassionate with our bodies. We definitely encounter grief within this disease for sure. Our bodies are valid. They do so much more for us than we actually acknowledge. And regardless of how much pain they're in, they still keep going. They didn't ask for lipedema. Our legs didn't ask for that. Let our bodies offer the kindness and admiration they deserve. Focus on your self-care that includes your body, body, mind, and spirit. And accept your body today, not next week, not the week after, as it is. Because that will help you to thrive. And it will help your body to thrive. Can you imagine if somebody kept telling you, oh, I don't like the way you look. Well, are you going to thrive? No. Live life now. Take the pictures, do all the things, but please start taking the pictures because since we don't see so many people that look like us, we have to actually get to know what look like us. When you're at the store with a lipedema lady next to you, you don't know she has lipedema because she has a dress to the floor. She has a long sweater on. She looks about six times the size that she really is because she thinks that that makes it look better because she's going to hide what she's got underneath there. And representation matters. If we don't take the time to represent those 70% <laughs> that we are part of, who is? Um, let's create some lipedema awareness by coming out of that hiding and being seen because hiding is a thing of the past. I'd love to keep the conversation going with you all. Thank you for having me. Um, I believe that connection is key, and I think that we prove that at this convention. I met Curvy Girl Beth on social media. In your bags, I have, um, and for those of you who are here virtually, know this is your invitation <laughs> right here, and I think it's in the photos. Um, I have um, offered a complimentary one-hour mentoring 
really just call me. That's really what it's all about. It doesn't, there needs to be no mentoring. Let's just connect. Um, but if you send an email through what it says on the card, then we can set up uh, an hour time to spend together. And I'd love to get you to know you better. Um, I'd love for you to join my journey at Curvy Girl Beth, wherever you decide. It's all across social media. And on my webpage, if you sign up for my email list, that'd be fantastic as well, because I'm hoping to create a bunch of program, more programs this year. Thank you so much, and see you all again.